Well, call it the please anyone wine. Letty Teague, she set off on a very, very difficult journey. She went to find the best Napa Valley Cabernet. She might have done it. Hey, Letty. Hey, Wendy. You have the toughest assignments. It's hard, isn't it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to complain this time. Not, not this time. Let's let's walk through. I mean, a Napa Cabernet. I call it the anyone wine because it's first of all uh -huh. anyone can pronounce it here. You know, in the U.S., so, most people know can where it is. Can anyone afford it? Is right. one of the key questions. That is a key question. So let's start out with some of the vineyards you went to. Schaefer was one of them. This is a personal favorite of mine. Interesting family. Tell us about that wine. Right. Well, the Schaefer Hillside Select, you know, as you know, is is one of the hallmark uh, um, uh, hallmarks of the Napa Valley. I mean, period. They've been producing this wine, you know, since uh, uh, unofficially since 1978. It, it wasn't named Hillside Select, but you know, the the family, you know, emigrated from the Midwest to the uh, to to Napa, you know, in the final tradition, and uh, and they've been producing this this ultra concentrated, super rich, just really gorgeous wine for for some time, and it has a real cult following. And t to the price, the price on this hillside side select on the, the one that was your favorite uh, what, what was that yeah I think well the current uh, the, the current cost current. is about two hundred twenty five dollars a bottle okay. so you know and, which is you know kind of an absurd thing to say but is reasonably priced for uh, for a great Napa Valley Cabernet it's about half the price of, of some of the cult wines I know that's kind of you know outrageous right. to hear but it, it's actually true tell us this Letty I mean if we're gonna uh, tell us very quickly a couple more vineyards and names we should look for and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, just Cabernet when people go out to order it, but but a couple more vineyards we should look at. Right. Well, the inspiration for this story was was someone asking me, you know, what are some reliable names in Napa Valley Cabernet? And while there are a lot, I focused on on five. I mean, not a lot, maybe, but there there are quite a few. Um, Araujo Isley, just a great great winery, um, historic vineyard, the Isley Vineyard. Phelps Insignia, which is actually a blend. Um, it was a blend of from from vineyard. Fruit all over the valley, but uh, more recently, it's it's from estate fruit, which is owned by uh, owned by Phelps. Spotswood, one of the great estates, um, family owned, again producing terrific Cabernet since the the 80s. And then Philip Tanya, which was um, just a, a kind of like blast from the past. A, a look at how Napa used to be when it was one man in one wine and one vineyard way up on Spring Mountain. And all of these that you found, the price is roughly over. They're all over $100, even closer to the $200 plus range. Is that right? With the exception of Philip Tanya, who's okay. kind of again living in the past, his wine is ninety-five dollars, which a lot of people uh, think is is vastly, you know, under underpriced. Um, uh, now, I people may not feel that way. I always ask you this, but give us uh, the sort of three, three quick things, easy things to say that'll make us sound smart about Cabernet. About Cabernet, okay. um, structure is is a, is a key word. Uh, concentration is another, particularly when talking about. Napa Valley, and uh, and and really, you know, texture and length, and in this case, I think the word finesse applies to to all of these wines. So those are sort of the, the key words that I would apply. All to right, Napa, Napa Cap. All right, Letty Teague, you've got more on this as you always do with her in the off-duty section. She knows everything about wine, folks. Listen to her.